Welcome to um, this month's episode of Evidence of Greatness. Um, this month, I'm going to be discussing an article that just recently came out. It's called Solution Focus versus Problem Focus Questions on Affect and Processing Speed Among Individuals with Depression. And you can see that um, I was one of the authors of this paper with um, three of my other colleagues. Um, and um, this, I think, is an, an important paper, um, even though it's um, a beginning, it's kind of a pilot study paper. Um, but it's giving us some insight into something that we will regularly deal with, right? Which is people who are dealing with depression. And so I wanted to share this, this paper with you. Um, so just a couple of things from the literature review, which is, to, and why we're looking at processing speed um, and those kinds of things, because depression we know can negatively impact people in lots of ways. Um, but one of the ways that it can negatively impact people is how quickly they process information, um, how, um, how quickly they, they process information into their working memory and how quickly they just process things in general, right? So in essence, if, if I'm taking in new information, if I'm learning something new, depression may get in the way of how effectively I can do that or how quickly I'll recall information. Um, in addition, depression obviously is um, the presence of negative affect or decreased affect. Um, and when negative affect decreases or, or increases, it then our perspective decreases and our perception of our possible resources begins to narrow. And one of the things that ends up happening, or one of the reasons why this happens is because people tend to ruminate, right? They begin to think about things um, over and over and over, or they hyper-focus on one specific thing at the expense of other things. And so this is one of the reasons why looking at processing speed is um, important because as, uh, as processing speed increases, um, accessibility to working memory increases, the ability to learn new things or to experience things and feel satisfaction from those things, um, that's all impacted by um, our processing speed. So one of the things that we know about solution-focused therapy is that it helps increase positive affect. It helps people feel good. Um, in addition, it helps people to build resources in an adaptive coping kind of way. So if you think about these, these two things together, if we apply solution-focused brief therapy to people who have depression, we in essence are hoping that they're positive affect will increase and therefore that will then increase their processing speed and therefore combat depression. In addition, it should help them to redo because when people feel good, when people have positive affect, it increases the, the visibility or the options to see different possibilities, which directly counters um, this um, rumination, right? So we know that um, SFBT can help to decrease ruminations and therefore increase, again, positive processing speed and executive functioning, how well I'm um, putting pieces together, how logical I am, how, how much I'm following something through to the end, right? So there's, there's a real question here of does solution-focused brief therapy indeed impact processing speed? So we went about doing this study, and here are the methods for this study. There were 60 total participants who were involved in the study. 30 were men, 30 were women. Um, all This study was conducted in India. So all of the people, all of the participants in this study were um, uh, um, Indian. Um, these 60 people were then divided randomly into three groups. Um, one was a solution-focused group, one was a problem-focused group, and one was a delayed experimental group. Sometimes that's called a control group, right? They don't get any treatment at all until after the study is completed, and then they have the option to go through the solution-focused group if they wanted to. Um, in order for participants to be included as part of this study, they needed to meet three criteria. One, they had to meet the DSM criteria for a depressive episode or a recurrent depressive disorder. They needed to be an adult between the ages of 18 and 50, 
and they needed to come, they needed to have completed senior secondary school, um, which is like high school, the equivalent of high school in India. Um, so in essence, we were looking for people who could read and write, who could engage, fill out the questionnaires, those kinds of things, um, and adults who were experiencing depression. So once they agreed to participate in the study, um, they were given three measures. Um, the first one was the positive and negative affect schedule, sometimes called the PANIS. And this is what measures their affect. Did they have positive affect? Did they have negative affect? So this is how we could tell what their affect was. The second um, measure was actually two subscales from the Wechsler Adult Intelligence Scale, sometimes called the WACE-4. Um, and these two subscales were specifically the search, the symbol search subscale and the coding subscale. So this just helped in essence, this is what helped us to understand their processing speed. How quickly could they find what they were looking for? How quickly could they identify it and pair it with something else? How quickly could they categorize it into one bucket or the other, right? So this is helping us to understand how quickly are they processing information? And then the third um, inventory that was given was the Beck depression inventory, a second version. Um, and this was obviously to assess their depression. Um, we wanted to make sure that everyone fit into the criteria. Then obviously they were given, once they were divided into their groups, um, some of the participants were asked solution focused questions um, about their experience, about their depression, those kinds of things. And others were asked about problem focused questions around like, how long have you experienced this? How bad would you say that it is? Um, those kinds of questions. Um, each of these participants, and this I think is an important thing to note, um, only participated in one session. So this was also kind of a single session assessment. Um, how quickly could something work? Um, and that will come in to be important later on um, as we consider the results of this section of this study. So let's go into the results. So what did we find? If we look at positive affect, um, these results were all kind of calculated using um, various statistics, primarily ANOVAs. Um, but if we look at positive affect, the solution focus group had a significant increase in positive affect. In essence, they felt better even after a single solution focused conversation. And they had, and this tail end of this says with a large effect size, which means that this change, not only was this a, a statistically significant change, but that the change was a, was a large change. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have achieved this change. The change was a big change. Um, the problem focus group and the delayed experimental group they both had minimal changes and the changes that they experienced were not statistically significant. So what this means on the PANIS, they took the PANIS at the beginning and they took the PANIS again at the end. And there was a significant difference for the solution focus group about how good they felt. Um, the negative affect, the solution focus group had a significant decrease in negative affect. And again, this was a large effect size. So this is saying not only did they it, all of a sudden have positive affect, they felt good, but you can simultaneously have positive and negative affect, but the solution focus group also decreased significantly in the negative affect that they were experiencing. Whereas the problem focus group and the delayed experimental group had no change as far as negative affect. Um, and that's something I think that's really important is that um, it's that solution focused brief therapy is helping on both ends of the spectrum. So then when we look at processing speed, right, the waste um, information, the solution focus group had a significant increase in processing speed. And again, this effect size was a very large effect size, which is fairly uncommon to get a very large effect size in, um, in psychotherapy um, research. Both of the, um, both of the other groups had also an increase in processing speed, but it wasn't a statistically significant increase. And the solution focused um, processing speed increased even more than the other two groups, which means simply by repeating this, 
that we would um, expect that they would get a little bit better, right? They're doing something they've done before, so they should get a little bit better. So that makes sense why the no treatment group and the um, problem focus group did get better, but um, the solution focus group, group processed information much more quickly than either of those groups. So the change we can surmise was contributing was contributed to by the intervention, by the solution focus work, not just by the repeated measure. And then if we look at that fourth category, which is the coding, which again, it's connected to processing speed, the solution focus group had a significant increase in their ability to code. And again, this was a very large effect size. And similarly to the other processing speed information, the other groups did improve, but the solution focused group improved significantly more than either of those other two groups. So what does all of this mean? It means, well, one thing that we really highlighted was there's very little interaction effect in the findings. And this means that the solution focused questions didn't necessarily impact affect more than the problem focused questions, right? Again, both had increase. However, it's important to consider that when we're comparing one evidence-based approach to another evidence-based approach, it's likely that both will find improvements. However, this is where that important thing about the single session comes into play. When, when we did one 30-minute session, um, they, the solution focus group did improve in their processing speed. They did improve in their positive affect. They did decrease the amount of negative affect. So there were some significant changes. But one of the reasons why it might not have shown a really drastic difference compared to the others is that this happened in one 30-minute session. So one of the things that we talk about in solution focus work all the time is that the conversation is the intervention, which means change is happening in that moment. But we don't know the effect of that change until after the client leaves and interacts with their world and changes. And then they come back and they tell us what changes they experienced. So like it says here, change might be delayed or there might be an additive factor. So once people changed a bit in this 30 minute session, they might leave and the changes might compound and they might come back and they might have more positive affect. They might have better processing speed because they've encountered, they've engaged in their world as a different version of themselves. So I think even though there wasn't a, you know, a really significant difference between um, the processing speeds and those kinds of things, it is really valuable to say there was a significant difference. And we, if we repeated this on multiple sessions, perhaps we would then have a bigger picture. Um, processing speed did improve. And this is an indication that there was less rumination um, and therefore there may be less depression um, even after a single 30 minute session. So I think some of the takeaways of this, um, of this study is that um, a single solution focus session can have an immediate effect. Um, it can decrease um, negative emotion it can increase positive emotion, it can increase processing speed, and it could have an immediate impact on depression, how people are feeling. Um, and so when people ask you, is solution-focused brief therapy effective with people dealing with emotion or dealing with depression, the answer can be yes. We know that it does have a, a direct impact on the depression that people are feeling. Um, so I know that this is a, a preliminary pilot study. I know that the sample size was relatively small. So we want to be careful with the generalization of the results that we find. But I do want to point out that there were significant results here um, that point very positively to the impact that solution-focused brief therapy can have um, with people who are dealing with depression. So let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what questions you have. Um, thanks again for being here. Um, and again, if you have ideas or thoughts about what studies you want me to look at, please let me know. I'm happy to consider whatever solution-focused studies you want me to look at. Um, thanks very much. 